نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم ما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الا تنصروه فقد نصره الله اذ اخرجه الذین كفروا ثانی اثنین اذ هما فی الغار اذ یقول لصاحبه لا تحزن ان الله معنا فأنزل الله سكينته عليه وأيده بجنود لم تروها وجعل كلمة الذين كفروا السفلى وكلمة الله هي العليا والله عزيز حكيم وقال تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم رب زدني علما رب زدني علما رب زدني علما Sadaqallahu al-Azim, respected and honorable elders, brothers, mothers, sisters and little ones, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As we slowly approach towards the last ashara of this blessed month of Ramadan, I first remind myself and I remind the listeners of the blessings of this last 10 days, the last ashara of the blessed month of Ramadan. Amongst the nights of Ramadan, there is one night called Laylatul Qadr, a night that is noted for its great blessings. The Quran describes it as being greater in blessings and spiritual virtue than a thousand months which in turn means it is greater than 83 years and 4 months, subhanAllah. Fortunate indeed are those people who attain the full blessings of this night, spending it in, in the ibadah of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he has then attained reward for the ibadat of 83 years and 4 months, subhanAllah. As for the origin of this night, it is mentioned by Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala an iddunni mansur that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was granted the night of Laylatul Qadr. There are many different reasons which I'll briefly elaborate on. One reason was that according to some hadith that the Prophet ﷺ would ponder over the life of the pre previous nations. And when looking at the life of the previous nations, he would see that because of the short age of his ummah and the long lives of the previous nations, the Prophet ﷺ felt that if my ummah wish to compete with the people before in righteous deeds but because of their short shorter lives it would be impossible for them to emulate or surpass them so to compensate for this the almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed the night of laylatul qadr the night of laylatul qadr that if a person was fortunate and spends these nights during their lifetime for just say 10 years. For 10 years a person was fortunate to have 10 years of the blessed night of Laylatul Qad. So for 10 years he witnessed Ramzan and the person after witnessing Ramzan for 10 years and for 10 years person was fortunate that he got to get the night of Laylatul Qadr. This would mean that that person has worshipped the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ibadat for 830 years and even more. Subhanallah. In this way, there could, we could 
compete with the previous nations. Yet another narration mentions that once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting with the Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhum Ajma'een and he mentioned about a man from the Bani Israel who would spend 1,000 months in jihad in the path of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. The Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhum Ajma'een envied this because they could not attain such reward. And then this is when the night of Laylatul Qadr was bestowed upon this Ummah. Yet other narrations mention that once the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned about four pious people from the Bani Israel who spent 80 years in sincere service and worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala not sinning in the least. This was Nabi Ayyub alayhi salatu was salam. Hazrat Yahya alayhi salatu uh, Hazrat Zakariya alayhi salatu was salam. Hazrat Hizqil alayhi salatu was salam. Hazrat Yusha alayhi salatu was salam. When the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een heard this, they were astonished. As of then is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibra'il alayhi salatu was salam and he appeared with Surah Qadr revealing the bless, blessings of this night. Nonetheless, whichever hadith are we taken, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed this night upon this ummah which has not been given to the previous nations. So let us strive in these coming 10 days that are going to befall us soon, in a few days, let us try and exert, strive and exert ourselves in attaining maximum benefit from the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah give us this tawfiq. Ameen. Ya Rabbal Alameen. Continuing with the blessed seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We heard how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has left Makkah al-Mukarrama and now made his way to the cave of, Th uh, the cave of Thor. Hamne suna ki Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Makkah al-Mukarrama se rawana ho kar ghare Thor ki taraf tashrif le gaye. Before the Prophet ﷺ entered the cave, Hazrat Abu Bakr and cleaned this cave. And after dusting it and cleaning it for Rasulullah, he tore his scarf or shawl and made sure he covered every hole. Every hole that he could see so that nothing could come out, no poisonous animal, a snake or scorpion could come and Harm the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam while he is taking rest inside the cave of Thor. Abu Bakr radiallahu taala anne apne chadar ko jo saath mein thi usko phara aur aise leer jaisi banai aur har ek leer ko ek ek surakh mein dala taake usme se koi muzi janwar na nikle jaise ke bichu aur saamp aur Rasool sallallahu alaihi wasallam ko تکلیف نہ پہنچائے تو سب جگہ کو صاف کرنے کے بعد رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو اندر آنے کی تشریف رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم تشریف اندر لے گئے آفٹر دس دا پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینٹرڈ وین دا پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اینٹرڈ دیر واز ٹو ہولس دیٹ واز ناٹ کورڈ وین دا ابو بکر دی لاتر آن سٹ ڈاؤن دا پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم پلیسڈ ہز ہیڈ in his blessed head in the lap of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and, and Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala with the heel of his foot covered one hole and with his hand had covered the other hole that in case anything comes out then it first attacks me and harms me and does not harm Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allahu Akbar Look at the love of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and ki muhabbat کہ انتہا کو دیکھیے کہ رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم غار میں تشریف لے گئے تو ابو بکر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ بیٹھ کے اور رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے سر مبارک ابو بکر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ کے ران پر رکھ دیا دو سراخ باقی تھے جس کے لیے کوئی لیر نہ بچی کہ ان کو بند کر دیا جائے تو ابو بکر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ نے اپنی ایری کو ایک سراخ پر رکھا اور ایک ہاتھ کو دوسرے سراخ پر رکھا تاکہ اگر کوئی موزی جانور نکلے تو پہلے مجھے ڈنگ مجھے ڈنگ مارے یا مجھے تکلیف دے رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو کچھ تکلیف نہ ہو 
سبحان اللہ اتنی محبت تھی رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے ساتھ کہ خود اپنے آپ پر دکھ برداشت تھی مگر رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو کوئی تکلیف رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے اوپر کوئی تکلیف برداشت نہیں ہوتی یہ صحابہ کی محبت تھی اللہ اکبر ناؤ والس دے اسٹیڈ ان دس کیو اف ثور دا مشرقین اف مکہ مین وائل ان مکہ المکرمہ آ ناؤ ویٹنگ ٹل دا مارننگ and knocking on the door of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bamboozled on why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has not left the house today. Mushrikeen Makkah, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ke ghar ka muhasaba kiya hua tha, aur muhasara kiya hua tha, to unho ne, jab subah ko darwaze par dastak di, to dekha ke Sayyidina Ali radiyallahu ta'ala an, Sayyidina Ali radiyallahu ta'ala an, waha khare huye. اور انہوں نے حضرت علی رضی اللہ وسلم سے پوچھا دے سین حضرت علی رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عطا دو اسٹانشٹ ان سین حضرت علی رضی اللہ تعالیٰ دے آسٹ وی دے پروفیس صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم انہوں نے پوچھا رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کہاں ہیں حضرت علی رضی اللہ تعالیٰ ریپلائیت آئی ڈو نوٹ نو اس نے کہا مجھے تو معلوم نہیں ہے آئی ڈو نوٹ نو ناؤ دے بکم انگری ان ستا سرچنگ فا ابو بکر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ ان رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم everywhere to the extent they came to the daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an's house Sayyida Asma radiallahu ta'ala anha when they came to the house of Sayyidina Asma radiallahu ta'ala anha they knocked on the door abhi aye to Abu Bakr ki bari beti Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an ki bari beti Hazrat Asma radiallahu ta'ala anha ke ghar aye aur دروازے پر دستک دی وہ نوکٹ نا ڈاؤ حضرت اسمار رضی اللہ تعالیٰ نے دروازہ کھولا اور یہ چند مشرقین مکہ جو تھے آئے ان میں سے ابو جہل بھی تھا اور ابو جہل was also amongst them ابو جہل inquires from سیدنا سیدہ اسمار رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ as to where is your father and where is رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیدہ اسمار رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ فرماتی ہیں سیدہ اسما رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ says I do not know وہ کہتی ہے کہ مجھے معلوم نہیں ہے she says ابو جہل slap me so hard across my face and across my face that my whole earring of my ear had fallen off that's how hard he slap me حضرت اسما رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ فرماتی ہے کہ اس جواب پر جب میں نے کہا کہ مجھے معلوم نہیں ہے تو ابو جہل نے میرے چہرے پر ایسے زور سے ایک تماشا مارا کہ میری کان کی جو بالی تھی وہ بھی نیچے گر گئی اتنے زور سے اس نے تماشا مارا کہ میرا گردن پورا مر گیا تھا اس طریقے تھا ہی سلام یہ سو ہار دا مائی ہول فیس ٹرنڈ ان مائی ایرنگ ہر فالن آف ان ہی لیفٹ اس غصے میں وہ نکل گئے مین وائل At the cave of Thor, the mushrikeen of Makkah are searching everywhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made it such that to protect Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an, Allah had ordered, Allah had ordered that a spider come and spin its web in front of the cave. A spider came and spun its web in front of the cave, showing that if anybody had entered here, the web would have been broken. Then a bird came and a tree grew from the, in front of the cave and a bird came and made its nest and laid its eggs there, showing again that no one could have disturbed the nest or the web and entered into this cave to hide. اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی نے رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اور سیدنا ابو بکر رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ کی بچاؤ کے لیے ایک بکری نے آ کر ایک جالا ڈالا اور ایک پرندے نے آ کر ایک گھوصلے میں اپنے انڈے بھی دے دی اور ایک درخت اگا اور اس میں اس پرندے نے اپنا گھوصلہ بنا کر اس میں انڈے دے دی تاکہ 
مشکین مکہ جب یہاں تک پہنچے تو جب یہ دیکھیں تو دیکھیں گے کہ یہاں کوئی آ نہیں سکتا اگر آیا تو تو اس پہندے کے انڈے اور گوسلے کو خراب کر دیا جائے اور اسی طرح اس مکری کے جو جالا ہے تو یہ بھی ٹوٹ ٹوٹا ہوا ہوتا تو اس طرح سے اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی نے ان کی بچاؤ کی مشکین مکہ ارد گرد رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو اور سیدنا ابو بکر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ کو ڈھونڈنے لگے دے سرچ ایوری وے اون ٹل دے ریچڈ دا ماؤتھ آف دس کھیو کلوز ٹو دس کھیو ابو بکر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ فیلنگ انکشس آز ٹو واٹس گوئن ٹو ہیپن اینی سیز ٹو دا پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم آئی فیئر دیٹ دے مے سی از ان سائڈ دس کھیو دس از وین دا پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ایٹ سیڈ لا تحزن ان اللہ معنا دا دو نو وری اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی اس ویدرز اس وقت رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے ابو بکر رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ سے یہ فرمایا کہ غمگین نہ ہو اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی ہمارے ساتھ ہے اس کے بعد اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی نے سورہ توبہ میں اذ هما فی الغار اذ یقول لصاحبه لا تحزن ان اللہ معنا فانزل الله سكينته عليه وايده بجنود لم تروها وجعل كلمه الذين كفروا السفلى وكلمه الله هي العليا والله عزيز حكيم سوره التوبه کے نازل فرمائی اور اس میں اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی نے اس واقعہ کا بیان کیا کہ اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی نے کس طرح رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اور ابو بکر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ کی مدد فرمائی اور ان کے ابو بکر کے دل میں سکینہ نازل فرمایا تاکہ وہ غمگین نہ ہو اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ ہر سینٹ پیس اینڈ ٹرینکولیٹی آن دا ہارٹ آف سیدنا ابو ان کنٹینٹمنٹ آن دا ہارٹ آف سیدنا ابو بکر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ ان اینڈ میک ایم کنٹینٹ آن ہاؤ اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ پروٹیکٹ دیم اینڈ پو سوچ تھنگز ان موشن دیٹ دا مشکین آف مکہ وڈ ناٹ بلیو دا اینی ون وڈ بی ہائڈنگ ان دس کھیو سو دا اٹینشن وو بی ڈائیورٹیڈ فرام ہیئر تو مشکین مکہ آئے اور وہ دیکھنے لگے ہر جگہ تو ان کو نظر نہیں آیا کہ یہاں کوئی آ سکے کیونکہ مکری نے جالا ڈالا ہوا تھا اور پرندے نے اپنے انڈے اور گھونسلے میں اپنے انڈے بھی دیے تھے اور ایک درخت بھی تھا سو وین دے ایٹ سین دا برڈ از دے اٹس نیسٹ ان دا ٹری دا ہر گرون دے اینڈ لائک وائز دا اسپائڈر ہیز پون اٹس ویب ان فرنٹ آف دا ماؤتھ آف دا کیو سو دے ریئلائز دا نو بڈی کوڈ ہیو اینٹر ہیئر so they dispersed from here and they left for three days for three days the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and sayyida abu sayyiduna abu bakr radiyallahu ta'ala stayed in this cave on one occasion while the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and abu bakr radiyallahu ta'ala was resting in this cave among these three days a scorpion or a snake had bit abu bakr radiyallahu ta'ala and from one of the holes that he was protecting With his heel of his foot, it bit him. The Prophet ﷺ was resting and his blessed head was in the lap of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an. The scorpion or the snake had bit Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an. Rasulullah ﷺ was calm for me. The Prophet ﷺ was calm for me. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an ke round for tha. Or, a bitchu ya a saap ne Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an ki eri pe dhang maara. ابو بکر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ اتنی تکلیف میں تھے اور تکلیف کی شدت میں کوئی آواز نہیں نکالی ہی ڈی ناٹ ٹیک آؤٹ اے ساؤنڈ بیکاز ہی ڈی ناٹ وانٹ ٹو ڈسٹرب دا سلیپ آف رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی نیند خراب نہیں کرنا چاہتے تو درد کے مارے کوئی آواز بھی منہ سے نہیں نکلی ان از ہی لیڈ دا آئی سٹ دے ان پین ٹیئرز بیگن ٹو فال فرام ہز آئیز بیکاز اف دا پین آنکھوں سے آنسو جارو جاری ہو چکے درد کے مارے آنکھوں سے آنسو جاری ہو چکے اور ٹیئرز بیگن ٹو فال ون آف دوز ٹیئرز فیل آن دا بلیسڈ چیک آف رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ایک آنسو رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے رخسار مبارک پر گر گئے رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم جاگ گئے رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے ابو بکر سے پوچھا رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم آسٹ ابو بکر رضی اللہ تعالیٰ وہ ابو بکر واس رونگ ہی سی سم تھنگ ہیز بٹن می سم تھنگ ہیز بٹن می اور آئی ایم ان سو مچ پین The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam seen the foot 
and the heel of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he took his blessed saliva, he applied it to where this poisonous scorpion or snake had bit Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an. He applied it on here. The venom had gone away. The pain had gone away. And this was the blessing of the Mubarak Lu'ab of Rasulullah, the Mubarak spit of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Mubarak saliva of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ne apne Lu'ab Mubarak ko us jaga pe lagaya aur us jaga pe lagane par aisa hua ke wo jo zahir tha, wo bhi nikal gaya aur wo dar tha, wo bhi nikal gaya. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. This is why you know, in Makkah al-Mukarramah and in Madinah al-Munawwara, when times were hard and people would find it difficult to feed their children and they could not feed them, women didn't have enough, enough milk in their chest, that they would come to Rasulullah sallallahu and they'd say, Oh Rasulullah sallam, our children are hungry, they're crying, there's nothing to eat. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would take his blessed saliva, he would apply it on the gums of the children and he would say, do not feed them till the eve. They do not feed, they do not need feeding. Till the evening. Allahu Akbar. This was the lu'ab of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the saliva of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Doing the work of food for them small children. They, they, they would bring him. How lucky were their children. Allahu Akbar. How lucky were them children. That the blessed saliva of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Was on their gums and their mouth. Allahu Akbar. How lucky would a person want to be. To be one of those children. Whose blessed. The, that the blessed saliva of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Was in their mouth. And. They would, the mothers were told that their child would not bother you. They would sleep throughout the day. They would sleep throughout the night because they will not need feeding. Allahu Akbar. This was the lu'ab of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like I said before at the beginning of the seerah, whatever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came into contact with or whoever came into contact with Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there would always be a difference inside that thing. And there would always be a blessing. Allahu Akbar. Nonetheless, for three days, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa stayed in the cave of Thor. And Abdullah bin Abu Bakr, the son of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and would spend the whole day in Makkah al-Mukarrama and in the evening would return. And in the evening he would return and he would tell the news to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and about what the Mushrikeen of Makkah are doing and they were saying. Like this, uh, in the evening, the animals would be bought and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an would drink the milk from the animals uh, in the evenings when nobody was around. After three days is when Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam set off from the cave of Thor. Teen din ke baad, yahaan se phir Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and aur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rawana huye. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and had with him at the time 5,000 dirhams. 5,000 dirhams. Us waq Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala ke saath 5,000 dirham te is se pehle 40000 dirham te jo usne allah ke raah mein kharch kar di allah aur rasool sa se ke allah aur allah ke rasool par kharch kar di now he had 40000 dirhams which he spent in the path of allah and his rasool sallallahu alaihi wasallam from that he only had 5000 dirhams left 5000 dirhams which he was accompanying with and taking on the way to madinatul manawwara and on the way as they were going on this hiding uh, path, they came across Umm Ma'bad. They came across Umm Ma'bad. Who was Umm Ma'bad? She was a very pious uh, woman who would show a lot of hospitality to her guests in her tent. Raste me, raste nikalne par Madina ke raste me. Umm Ma'bad radiallahu ta'ala anha ke khayme par guzar hua. Umm Ma'bad ek nihayat sharif aur mehman nawaz khatun thi. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aur Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an 
both took rest inside uh, the tent of Umm Ba'bad. Or is me uh, is Umm Ba'bad ke khame me Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Abu Bakr radiyallahu taala an uh, tashrif le gaye or yaha thori der ke liye thair gaye. Here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam inquired about a goat a goat that was at the far end of the room who was very lazy lethargic and very fat in size as to if it gives any milk Umm Ma'bad says that this animal is lazy lethargic and it's very fat but it doesn't give any milk and because of this it doesn't go on the hilltops for grazing because it's unable to move very well uh, and this is why it stays here and it doesn't give any milk at all Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam ne ek bakri ke bare mein poocha jo ke khaime mein thi ke ye bakri kuch doodh deti hai to umm ba'bad ne ye kaha ke ye bakri lagar aur dubli hai ye koi doodh nahi deti so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if i could try to milk this goat the so sa sahab ne ye farmaya ke main ise do sakta hu agar aapki ijazat ho to umm mahabat says yes by all means if you can get some milk out of it then by all means try to umm mahabat ne ijazat di the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam soon as he touched the udders soon as he touched the udders of this goat they were full of milk and the prophet sallallahu began to milk himself and he started to milk until the whole bartan the whole bowl was full it was enough for 8 to 10 people to drink this milk remember it could not produce any milk there was no milk inside this uh, goat at all but this was the barakah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam by touching the udders of this bakri allah made it such that this bakri was full of milk and it produced so much milk that it was enough for 8 to 10 people rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam ne jab is bakri ke thano ko haath lagaya jaise thano ko haath lagaya to foran uske than doodh se bhar gaye aur rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam inke iske thano se doodh done lage ke itna doodh nikla nikla ke 8 ke 10 aadmi ye doodh pee sake to rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam ne iske baad after this the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave this milk to umm ma'bad she drank until she could not drink anymore after this the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam served the milk to abu bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala an to the slave of abu bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala an who was accompanying them and like this it was given to the non muslim that was the guide and showing him the way and the path to madinatul munawwara it was given to him as well and they all drank to their fill until they could not drink any more after this the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once again iske sabne doodh piya hatta ke rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam ne bhi piya pehle umm ma'bad ko diya iske baad abu bakr dilawat ko diya aur baaki jo rasta dikhane wale the usko bhi diya aur abu bakr dilawat ke jo ghulam the usko bhi diya sab sehrab hue iske baad rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam ne dobara is bakri ko doya and utna doodh dobara nikla and again he milk this goat and the same amount of milk was received and he gave it to umm ma'bad and he says here umm ma'bad this is yours umm ma'bad ye le jao ye aapki hai umm ma'bad takes this and she places it in her tent in the evening after her husband abu ma'bad returns from grazing the animals in the jungle he sees this big bowl of milk sham ko bakriya charane ke baad abu ma'bad jo umm ma'bad ke shohar the wapas aaye to dekha ki ek bartan mein doodh bhara hua hai aur taajjub se kehne laga ki umm ma'bad ye doodh kahan se aaye ye bakri to doodh deti hi nahi hai to ye doodh kahan se aaye 
So then he asked, where does this milk come from? This goat does not give any milk. So where does this milk come from? This is when she starts to explain the story and this event of the coming of Rasulullah saying that a beautiful, handsome looking man, a well spoken and well mannered man, come and this is what happened and this is the miracle that took place. Usne per Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ko ye waqia bayan kiya ke ek haseen aur mubarak huriya wale ek aadmi ke aaye aur usne thano ko haath lagaya aur uske mubarak haathon ki wajah se itna doud is janwar se nikla. This is when Abu Ma'bad said this is the very same Qurayshi person that we have heard of and I'm definitely going to meet this person. Abu Ma'bad Ma'bad ne kaha ke mein samaj gaya wallahi ye wahi Qurayshi admi hai mein zarur iski khidmat mein hazir hunga. Mein zarur iski khidmat mein hazir hunga. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thereafter had left and made his way towards Madinatul Manawwar. On his way, whilst the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was resting under a tree. Whilst the Prophet Sallallahu was resting under a tree. Suraka bin Malik. He was informed by some people that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or a few people are walking from this unknown path and making their way towards Madinatul Manawwara. And the Quraysh of Makkah up till now have put a bounty on the head of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala and na'uzu billah to bring them dead or alive. Dead or alive and that person or them people will be given a hundred camels each. A hundred camels each. Ab Quraysh ne ye ishtihar diya ke jo shakhs Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an na'uzu billah ko katal karke le aay ya giriftar karke le aay har ek ke liye ilada ilada so oont in naam me diye jayenge to jab chand admiyo ne suraka bin malik ko ye kaha ke hum ne ye suna ke ek anjaan raaste se chand admi ja rahe hain hume andesha hai ke shayid ye rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam na ho तो सुराका बिन मालिक ने यह सोचा अगर मैं इनको कह दूं तो ये लोग चले जाएंगे तो वो इनाम जो को जो कुरैश ने इश्तिहार दिया तो ये इनको इनको मिल जाएगी तो उनको रफा दफा करके कहा कि नहीं वो लोग नहीं है वो लोग नहीं है मैं जानता हूं वो लोग को, कोई और है वो लोग कोई और है व्हाट डिड ही डू सुराका बिन मालिक व्हेन ही वाज इंफॉर्म द फ्रॉम दिस अननोन पाथ there's a group of individuals moving towards Madinatul Manawwara. He thought in his mind that this bounty, I want it all for myself. And if I let these lot know that, yes, that might be the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then they'll take the bounty and I'll have nothing for myself. So he misled them by saying, no, I know them. There's, uh, there's some other people. They c- it cannot be them. Uh, so ignore it and continue with your things. He sat in the majlis of his people and he made his way home. After making his way home, he says to his slave girl that take my camel, I'll take my camel and take it to the bottom uh, near at the bottom area of my house and there I will collect it. He went home himself, he took his bow and arrow and sword and he leaves from not from the front of the house, from the back of the house and made his way to the very same point he told his slave girl to take his camel. Here he hastened to where the people had told him about where they had seen the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Is majlis se utkar Suraka min Malik ne apni baadi se kaha ke fula teele par, fula jaga par ja kar mere janwar ko khara kar do और मैं आ रहा हूं अपने नेजे और तलवार को लेकर घर के पुश की तरफ से निकल गए 
और अपनी सवारी पर जाकर बैठ गए नाउ एज ही वेंट ऑन हिज कैमल और हॉर्स मैन ही से इट वाज अ हॉर्स ऑन हिज हॉर्स ही मेड हिज वे एंड नाउ एज ही द प्रोफेसर सल्लम वाज रेस्टिंग अंडर दिस ट्री ही calls out and now abu bakr radiyallahu ta'ala on seeing this says to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam now we have been caught we have been seen we have been made jab abu bakr radiyallahu ta'ala ne dekha ki suraka bin malik aa raha hai to rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam ko kaha ke bas inhone hame dekh liya inhone hame dekh liya dobara rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam ne kaha la tahzan inna allah ma'ana again the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had said la tahzan inna allah ma'ana that indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with, with, with us. There and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a bad dua against Suraka bin Malik. And as Suraka bin Malik tried to approach, Jaysay ke Suraka bin Malik Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ke paas aane lage, to what happened? His horse sunk into the ground. His horse sunk into the ground. His horse sunk into the ground. and it sunk all the way up to its knees jaise ke suraka bin malik rasul sa sam ki taraf barne lage to rasul sa sam ne badwa ki to suraka ka jo gora tha suraka ka jo gora tha gutne tak patreli zameen mein dans gaya in a solid rocky ground in a solid rocky ground his horse sunk into the ground upon the knees suraka bin malik begging suraka bin malik now begging to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to let him go and he says i know that you la have done badwa against me this is why the ground has swallowed me this is why the ground has swallowed me what happened to suraka bin malik and how did he get freed or did was he not freed क्या हुआ क्या नहीं हुआ इन शुमारो इन द ब्लेस ऑफ रसूल बिफोर आई फिनिश वी ऑलवेज गो थ्रू ए सुन्न टू इम्प्लीमेंट इन आवर लाइफ दिस सुन्न वॉज हर्ड टूडे इन द ब्लेस ऑफ रसूल सल्लाम इफ यू रिमेंबर इन द सीरा द प्रोफे सल्लाम मिल्क द goat of umm ma'bal how he served the milk let's listen in the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sayyiduna abu qatada radiyallahu ta'ala reports that nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the one who is offering the drink should drink last it is sunnah for the one pouring or offering a drink to drink after everyone has had their share subhanallah we have seen that practically inside the seerah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam today and we have seen it before as well when abu huraira radiyallahu ta'ala an when he was hungry and he came to the house of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked him to serve the milk he served the milk to everyone thereafter he drank himself at the end the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had drunk this is one of the sunnahs of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that when we are serving any water or a drink at home or to our friends or guests then we follow this beautiful sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam just like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did today in the house of umm ma'bad after milking the goat he served the milk to umm ma'bad first there after to abu bakr radiyallahu ta'ala an and then to the guide and the servant there after the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had this milk himself just like as the hadith mentioned in tirmizi by abu qatada radiyallahu ta'ala an that when we serve a drink or anything to anybody then we first serve them and then at the end the person who's serving drinks may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to adopt this sunnah and all the sunnahs that we have gone through uh, throughout this blessed month so far in our lives uh, and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this tawfiq to implement it not just in the month of ramadan but outside of ramadan wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin